All right, in this video, we are going to take a closer look at to, uh, how we connect to MySQL. So there's a number of different options there. I wanna talk about it a little more in depth. So there's two primary types of connections that we're gonna be dealing with. One is what we call a local connection. You're gonna be connecting to MySQL from the command line on the machine that is running MySQL. So the MySQL server software is running on the same machine. Uh, how it connects is really going to be dependent upon your operating system. There are different options for different operating systems. I'm not going to get into that rabbit hole right now, but understand you're going to be running in a command line talking to MySQL directly on that machine. Now, you do also have the option of a remote and client connection. This is probably by the far the vast majority of how clients are going to be connecting to MySQL. They're going to be running on a different computer, a different server, a laptop, whatever, and they will be connecting to MySQL that way. And this is a direct connection. So don't think about like using a web page as connecting to MySQL because you're connecting to the web server and not the database server directly so that the web server would be talking to the database server on your behalf. This is talking about getting a direct connection to MySQL. Now, you can actually do this on the same machine running MySQL through the network layer, or you can connect to the MySQL server from a different machine over the network. So both are very common use cases. Now, we talked a little bit about the uh, client protocols. That there are a number of protocols that MySQL does support. TCP IP is the most common, and that is what we are going to be looking at in this course. Socket is a very uh, Unix, so Unix, OS X, and Linux, they're all POSIX-based operating systems, so uh, they will have the socket option. And then pipe and memory, those are going to be Windows-specific connection techniques. But the one that spans everything and the one that we will be using inside this course is TCP IP. Now, if you're a little bit new to networking, TCP is Transmission Control Protocol, and IP stands for Internet Protocol. Now, this works in conjunction with DNS, which is uh, considered a domain name service. So this is going to associate an IP address, an Internet Protocol address, with a human-readable name. So like Google.com is actually a human-readable name for the IP address of 216.58.2. 218.110. So that is the actual internet address of google.com. Now, localhost is IP address of 127.0.1, and we will be seeing that in this course. That's why I'm bringing it up. And the other thing that we need to understand is a port. This is like a, a logical connection endpoint of an IP address. So a port is a way I'm going to go to this address. I'm going to talk to you with this language effectively so kind of like the protocol but you also have a, a listener there so you want to go to this port and you're expecting fred to be there and fred happens to know spanish so you're going to go to that port and talk to fred in spanish so that's kind of like how the protocols and ports work so it's a little bit confusing if you're not very familiar with networking technology uh, the main thing to remember is that it is a logical a port is a logical connection endpoint on an address so now ports can range from 0 to 65,535. There's a number of ports in use. MySQL has the default of 3306 for its port. We will be using 3306 throughout the course. You can configure MySQL connect on a different port. Some people do this for security purposes to obscure it. It is a perfectly valid thing to do. But for this course, we are going to be using the default value of 3306. Now, here's an example. On the middle there, we have MySQL. That is our database server that's surrounded by clients with TCP connections into it. And let's say that server has an address of 127.10.10.4. And everybody's going to be connecting on that IP address over port 3306. So that I'm hoping this will help you visualize how your clients and different computers are going to be talking to the MySQL database server. Now, connecting to MySQL in this course, we really have two primary options. We will be working from our own computers with MySQL running on that computer. So we will be using either localhost on port 3306 or the IP address of 
127.0.1 on port 3306. Now it's important to remember that the word localhost actually will resolve to 127.0.0.1. And it, as you do the connections, I might switch between uh, using localhost and the IP address. It's perfectly fine to do one. There's really no reason to do one over the other. Neither is right, neither is wrong. Now, once you are in the enterprise connecting to an actual MySQL database, generally you're going to want to use that name because if the IP address changes, then what this allows your IT department to do is if the IP changes, they can update that name to the different IP address. So there's tools to do this. So when you are doing, if you're like writing reports and stuff, you want to be using the server name, not the IP address in case for whatever reason that IP address changes. Now, coming up in the course, we are going to be looking at the command line. We are going to be using a program called MySQL, handily enough. Uh, literally, it's a program called MySQL. We are going to use that, connect to the, the MySQL database, and I have videos to show you uh, this coming up in the course. And this is actually a, a client program for the command line. It gives you a shell to work with the MySQL database, and it's got some nice features in it. We're not going to spend a lot of time there. We're going to focus on using MySQL Workbench. And this is a graphical user interface for working with MySQL database. It's got a lot more rich features. I'm going to be doing the majority of the course using MySQL Workbench. It's a good tool. Now, there are a number of different tools available, a number of different clients available for MySQL. Obviously, you know MySQL is wildly popular, so there are a lot of options that you can use. If you want to use something other than MySQL Workbench, you are absolutely welcome to. But going forward, MySQL Workbench is probably the most popular one out there. Although I do have my own personal preferences, we will be using that throughout the course. Now, here's an example of the MySQL Workbench. This is for OSX. This is an example of the UI that you get. You can see this is a lot more rich of an experience to work with than just the simple command line. So we will be seeing this a lot more in the course coming up. Coming up in the remainder of this section, we will get to see how to use the command line, and then we will install and bring up MySQL Workbench, and we'll be using it from there on.